Hey y'all, it's Sarah, the Wine Loving Bookworm, back with a book and wine review on your Monday night. I didn't get the book finished yesterday, so it had to be Monday. Um, my book nook still isn't completely done. I need to get some furniture, so I'm just kind of sitting in front of the bookcases right now. But it's getting there. I'm actually going to go tomorrow and see if I can find something. Um, okay, so tonight let's start with the wine. I picked up Cask and Barrel Cabernet Sauvignon. It's from Lodi, California. It's aged in bourbon barrels. My husband really likes bourbon um, bourbon barrel beer. So I thought, I saw this and I was like, oh cool, let's give it a shot. Um, ironically or coincidentally or whatever, tomorrow I'm gonna be running really early in the morning. You'll understand the ir irony. I don't know if that's right to use irony there, but we'll go with it um, when I tell you what book I read. But um, I can't really imbibe a lot tonight because I gotta get up early. So we're just gonna have a little bit. Cheers. Ooh, you can taste that bourbon barrel. Like that is like, you know, I hate to be, sound like a wine snob, robust. It's a little robust. Try it one more time. Wow, I mean, that is like the only word you can use to describe that. It's pretty good, but it is very, there's a lot going on there. All right, so bourbon barrel, cask and barrel, what's it called again? Why can I never remember any? Cask and barrel Cabernet Sauvignon. This is pretty good. If you like Cabernet Sauvignons, I usually don't like them too much. They're too heavy for me. But you know, this is good. I don't know if I can drink too much of it, but very good. Okay, so let's move on to the book. I read Marathon Woman, <clears throat> excuse me, Marathon Woman by Katherine Schweitzer. Um, and so, Duh, I'm running tomorrow. You know, that's, did you make the connection? No, no, no. It's not as great when I had to spell it out to you, right? Um, I, I think I've said before, I'm a big runner. I did one marathon. I would never do that again. But I've done 13 half marathons. I'm wearing, I wanted to wear my shirt I got from the marathon and I can't freaking find it. Like, really? I did one marathon and I can't find the freaking shirt. Um, so I wore one from Celebration Half, which I've done twice. I hate Celebration Half, but... Um, for some reason I did it twice. So I did 13 of those. I've done a couple triathlons, a couple duathlons, um, tons of 5Ks and 10Ks and things like that. So I like to run. I run a lot. It's a hobby for me. It's enjoyable for me. It's exercise, whatever. So I was interested in reading this book because she was the first, um, she wasn't the first female to run the Boston Marathon, but she was the first female to run it like with a number. So basically, um, and, and, and this is her memoir, okay? Um, and she won the Billy Award for journalism. Um, and it came out April in April of 2007, which was the 40th anniversary of her running the first Boston Marathon. Um, so a quick background before I get into that. She was a journalism major. She went to Syracuse University. Her dad had her running when she was younger, just like a little bit. Um, and she always liked it. And so she got into it more when she went to Syracuse University. And the guy's like, hey, we should run the Boston Marathon. Um, so she was like, okay. Um, at this time, running was a male-only sport. They thought that women were too fragile, you know, to do this. And oh my gosh, you cannot run a marathon. Are you kidding me? So when she went to fill out the forms to qualify, she put K.W. Schweitzer. Her name is Catherine, but when her dad spelt it, he forgot to put the E in the name so she always signs everything kw schweitzer just so it doesn't create confusion or people spell her name wrong um and they approved her because it did, they couldn't see that she was a woman even though it didn't say it was male only that's just the tradition so she gets there and she's got the racing bib on you know and it's like an uproar like people were like oh my gosh you you know you stole that you're cheating She's like, no, you know, and then one, one of the officials, like, literally tried to, like, pull her off the course. It was crazy. Her boyfriend at the time, like, pushed him away. Um, so she was the first woman to run it with a number, but women, women had been running it for years. This is 1967, okay? Women had been running it for years, um, just unofficially. They had no number. Um, and one of the things I found interesting and in just how archaic these races were they had no water stations no bathrooms on the course i mean a marathon there's things going on sometimes so <laughs> that that's crazy i've never been to a race like that so um dangerous too but that's just how they did it back then so she after she 
ran it. She ran it in a 420, four hours and 20 minutes. I did mine in four hours and 15, so I was like, ooh, I beat her in that one. <laughs> um, she was officially banned along with her boyfriend at the time that later became her husband. And he was pissed at her because he wanted to go to the Olympics. I forget what it is. He does like hammer throwing. Is that a thing? Like, you know, we throw. I don't think it was a disc. I think it was like an actual hammer throwing thing. He wanted to go to the Olympics and he felt this would hurt his chances. Now, he was a jerk. <laughs> he was such a jerk. He ran this race with her, the marathon. He didn't even train. And he's like, well, if a girl could do it, I could do it. You know, and he was just such a jerk. Like, the whole time she was with him, I didn't understand why, what she thought, what she saw in him at all. Okay, so let's fast forward. She spent her life trying to get women recognized in running. Um, and it just didn't, you know, it, it was a big fight. She, after she graduated, she went to Munich to cover the Olympic Games because she wanted to try to see how she could get women in there. You know, how, how we could get a women's marathon going in the Olympics. They didn't have anything like that at the time. Um, while she was there, that was when terrorists came into the Olympic um, Village and held hostage all the Israeli athletes. And I think they ended up killing like 12 of them. Like it was crazy. Um... So she was actually there, you know, her primary purpose was trying to figure out how to get women into the Olympic Games in a marathon capacity, but she was also doing freelance newspaper work to try to earn some money, and she was able to cover that, um, which, you know, is something they actually, one of the few things they, they published that she wrote. Um, so she marries Tom. Tom is the guy. He's just such a, ugh, you know, he's just, I can't with him. And their marriage crumbles, and she moves to New York City. Um, they don't get divorced for a while, but because he's Catholic and he didn't want to get divorced, but they're not living together. Um, she starts working at some sort of athletic company called AMF. wasn't really exactly sure what it was. Um, and she runs. She's working in White Plains, but she lives in Manhattan. And she's running all the time at night in Central Park. I'm like, oh, my Lord, woman. I'm like, what are you doing? You know, that's so dangerous. I'm just like, danger, danger. Like, that. you just don't do that. Um, and I'm like, this lady, man, she's so lucky. Well, she ends up getting mugged at knife point at one point. So she wasn't too lucky. Um, but she kind of romanticizes running at night and running in the city. That ain't romantic, okay? Being raped, being murdered, you know, hopefully you'll just get mugged. That's not romantic. Don't do it. Um, so she meets a new guy, Philip. She ends up getting a divorce from Tom. And she meets a new guy, Philip. And her now her new goal, she's been running marathons. And her time is going down, but she wants to break three hours. That's really good, you know. Like, that's huge, especially with the first one she ran at 420. So her time is starting to go down, um, and she wants to break three hours. And Philip becomes, like, very, very involved in helping her with this. Creates, like, schedules for her to run that are really difficult. Um, and so, it, but she's doing it, and she's getting better and better. Um, she eventually marries him later on, but they get divorced. Um... So, in 1974, she thinks she's ready to run the New York City Marathon and she can break three hours. Well, it was so hot. It had been so nice, and then it became like 95 degrees outside. So hot. And back then, the New York City Marathon was like four laps, four or five, I don't know, some laps around Central Park. It was really weird, just going around Central Park over and over again. So, it's really hot, and then it started a huge lightning storm and raining, and she's like slouch, sloth, sloth, bleeps, I can't speak, you know, like just trying to get through the mud and the rain after the heat, after all this stuff. Remember, they don't have water stations or anything like that. So she actually has people that assist her along the way and come bring her water. Other people don't have that. A lot of people dropped out. She ends up winning the women's division for that marathon, but she doesn't break the three hours. She was like 3.07 or something. Um, so now Boston started allowing women to run in 1972. So, 1974, she won the New York Marathon. But now, 1972, the Boston starts to let her run, women run. And she goes every year. They make them, like, line up separately and all this crazy stuff. But she's out there. She's running. So, um, in 1975, she runs the Boston Marathon again. She's ran it every year since women have been allowed in. And she beats it. She beats her time. She gets a 251, which is just amazing. I mean, these are fast times. I mean, Olympic marathoners today can do it even faster. But to me, that's that's amazing. Um, she got second place, <laughs> though. Somebody ran faster than her. Um, and again, like I said before, she divorced Philip at some point, And then she marries Roger Robinson, who's a runner and author and who's British. She married him in 1987. They're still married. Um, now, 
when you first read the book, I was like, really? She just seems to like toot her own horn all the time. I'm so crazy. I'm so wonderful. I'm so blah, blah, blah. This is so easy for me. So it was really annoying at first. But when you get into all the work she does on getting women accepted into the running world, that was very interesting and I loved it. I thought overall it was a really good book, although her writing could be a little cliche and cheesy at times. And she worked really hard on female empowerment issues, including, you know, especially running. Um, as she went on in her life, she became a television commentator on marathons. Um, her first bib, just a trivia, was 261, the one she ran where they didn't know she was a woman, um, has been retired now by the Boston. No one, no one can run under 261 anymore. That's like hers. So that's kind of cool. Um, now, the one thing that bothered me, she talks about her weight a lot. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, for someone who's supposed to be so empowered and women empowered she's very focused on how much she weighs and how she looks she calls herself overweight when she clearly isn't um and at one point i want to read this quote to you she says my weight was well under 120 pounds i was almost skinny for the first time in my life really 120 pounds that's skinny that's skinny for anybody but i guess it's a product of the 70s and yeah we're trying to do woman empowerment but we're still not where we are today by any means so that kind of threw me off a little bit um and again, I really loved her message, and I really loved all the work she did. I mean, she was just a badass. She just stuck herself in there and was like, I'm going to run these races. And she ran the Boston Marathon without numbers, you know, other times, even though she was, like, banned. Um, so it was just very cool to see how it all came full circle. Um, so, yeah, if you're a runner uh, um, or interested in female issues, like empowerment issues, this is a really good book to read. You have to kind of look overlook some of the... Um, in modesty, I guess we call it, what do you, you know, bragging a little bit, um, and you have to overlook the, um, you know, some of her cheesy writing, but overall, it's a really cool story, it's a very awesome, inspiring story for females everywhere, so um, definitely pick it up. Next, I went to the thrift store the other day, and I found this, ah, it's Betty White's biography, oh my god, I love Betty White, Golden Girls, they rock, um, so I had to pick it up. You know, thrift store is the best. It's like 99 cents. So I'm going to read this. It's called If You Ask Me, and of course you won't. So that is going to be my book for next week. I'm really excited to read this. I hope it's like really funny. Um, so, yeah, that's all for me today. So pick yourself up some cask and barrel Cabernet Sauvignon. If, you're, if you like really robust Cabernets, I'm using all the buzzwords. I don't know if that's how you describe wine. I'm just throwing that out there. Let me try it one more time. Ooh, oh yeah, that's got a lot going on it. Um, and if you're interested in running, if you're wanting an inspiring story, pick up Marathon Woman by Katherine Schweitzer. Um, so that's it for me tonight. I'm really super tired, so I'm sorry if I'm coming off rambling a little bit and I went over my time. Um, but that's it for me tonight. I hope you guys have a great week, and I will see you next Sunday for Betty White.